Welcome to the News on Zodiac with me, Philip Caetano da Costa, the headlines. Police in Lilongwe impound on and road with Ikebaza motorcycles. President Lazarus Chaguera appoints four new commissioners of the Malawi Electoral Commission. Commentators question Chaguera's suggestion to turn quasi-religious grouping PAC into a constitutional body. And Agriculture Minister Lobin Lowe says over-dependence on maize affects food systems in Malawi and Africa. Now the news in detail. Police in Lilongwe have started impounding on and roadworthy Kabaza motorcycles. This follows the expiry of a notice that all motorcycles be registered and that all taxi operators have licenses. Details with Chimwemwe Padata. Well, I will not be able to give you that uh, report. And in Doha, angry communities in the district and Chisi took to the streets and presented a petition to District Commissioner Alex Doko over alleged oppression by Ngoni chiefs. Aunyango Nkoma explains. This morning, a lot of people from Chisi and Doha took to the streets in a demonstration against the, uh, what they call oppression by Ngoni chiefs here in the district, particularly in the eastern side of Doha and also in the uh, southern side of GC district. So this morning, uh, as I said, they started that demonstration from uh, Delia Park here in Doha up to the district commissioner's office. And uh, upon reaching the district commissioner's office, it was the director of administration who came out to actually receive the petition from these uh, people who are alleged to be chairs. Uh, these people are alleging that the uh, Bengali chiefs are uh, allegedly taking a lot of money from them if, if they want to be installed as uh, traditional leaders or as the bridge head. For example, they said that I, I even pay as, as much as the thousand kwaja for them to be installed as uh, a, a, a chief or a bridge head. Uh, some also allege that uh, the district council has been neglecting to pay them their monthly honoraria. I think they have stayed almost three years without receiving their honoraria. And they have also said that, um, uh, in the petition, rather, they have also said that um, some chiefs who were actually installed during the Rajesh Banda's uh, reign uh, have been removed from uh, their positions and they are not even receiving the honoraria. They, they actually uh, mentioned uh, some traditional authorities like in TNJ, some traditional authority, Kassaliga, but also some traditional authority, Chipeni. That's when these people were removed from the uh, from their position and uh, they have not been uh, reinstated because they are chairs. But those who are going is uh, alleging that they have been reinstated as of now. So they are asking the President of the Republic of Malawi, uh, uh, Lazarus Aguera, to consider reinstating these three uh, group of age heads. They have also talked about uh, another uh, group of base heads uh, that the uh, uh, group of base head man in Kandama. They are saying this particular base, uh, group of base head has been there for quite a number of years, but is not being considered to be installed as a uh, some traditional leader or traditional uh, leader here in the district. So there are a number of issues that they have actually put across in this particular petition. And they receiving the petition, uh, the rest of um, administration at the district council, uh, Boniface Matiega said, he will forward the petition to the President of the Republic of Malawi, the Rolazal Chakwera, for uh, his action on the concerns that they have to raise. From Doha and Nchisi, we revert to the earlier story in which police in Lilongwe have started impounding all night roadworthy Kabaza motorcycles. Shimwame Padata has the details. Police in Lilongwe have impounded motorcycles that are unroadworthy following an expiry of a directive that all motorcycles be registered and that all cyclists should have driving licenses. A visit at one of the roadblocks where the police have managed to impound motorcycles uh, have licenses as a result of financial constraints. One of the motorcycle taxi operators who we talked to said that government instead revised downwards fees that are supposed to be paid 
to have these licenses. And uh, the police officers at this site said that the two-day exercise will be conducted in the entire Lilongwe city where teams have been deployed to impound or unroad worthy motorcycles. We should recall that the, the motorcyclists have on several occasions protested this decision that they should start registering their motorcycles and that they should start operating their businesses with licenses. And now what we are seeing is that the exercise has come at a time when uh, these operators are still complaining that the, this decision is not good for them to uh, dig deeper into their pockets to start registering their motorcycles and that they should also start having licenses to operate their businesses. President Lazarus Chakwera has appointed four new commissioners of the Malawi Electoral Commission, MEC. They are Richard Chepotega, nominated by MCP, and Francis Kasaila, Dr. Emmanuel Fabiano, and Caroline Mfune, nominated by the DPP. These replaced four commissioners whose appointment was nullified by the court on account that their appointment by former President Peter Mutarika flouted procedure. Make chairperson Dr. Jifundo Gajale explains. That date can only be set by the office of the, regist- the Chief Justice through the registrar. We informed them that we need the date, then according to the data of the Chief Justice, they will give us a date. Of course, we're not entirely paralyzed because we're able to implement the decisions of the previous commission. But what this means now is that uh, we will be properly constituted to even be able to hold the by-elections, continue with our boundary review process, and undertake any other work that requires a fully constituted commission. So it's a very welcome development. We, we are very delighted. Commentators have questions practicality and relevance of suggestion by President Lazarus Sequeira to turn the quasi-religious grouping PAC into a constitutional body. Governance commentator Sharif Gaisi and a law expert Dr. Benedict Malunga say doing this could water down relevance of the institution. President Lazarus Sequeira suggested this Wednesday when he met leadership of the Public Affairs Committee PAC. Alex Banda reports. I don't understand why um, the president made that suggestion. Um, are there any good reasons why the PAC should be a part of uh, a constitutional uh, body? Uh, because we already have uh, constitutional bodies here in Malawi. The voice of a legal expert, Dr. Benadetta Malunga. She is reacting to a suggestion by President Lazar Sequeira to turn the quasi-religious grouping PAC into a constitutional body. Um, I don't really uh, see the need. Uh, if we go that way, there may be several implications. Uh, killing an all-independent body uh, that is uh, providing checks and balances um, to so many issues in the country, um, there may also be some financial implications. In agreement, is Sharif Kaisi a blunder-based governance expert? Yes, with all due respect to what the president has proposed, but still I go... Uh, against that. If, if we look back why PAC was basically uh, formulated, uh, it came um, uh, at the very crucial time when Malawi had the one-party system of government and the um, uh, people thought of having that uh, to look into issues to do with uh, uh, how they can do checks and balance of what the government is doing. PAC chairperson Monsignor Patrick Tawale after the meeting told this reporter PAC will have to meet on the suggestion by Chagwela. For Zodiac and Blanta, this is Alex Banda. Meanwhile, PAC is up it that through its involvement and government backing will turn tables on the low uptake of COVID-19 vaccines in the country. Less than 400,000 people in the country have so far been vaccinated. A population health expert says it is worrisome in the fight against the pandemic. We have this report. Uh, already somewhat addressed by the public affairs committee park has met president lazar stegwela to commit its efforts on sensitizing and advocating for the covid 19 vaccine amid the law uptake park chairperson monsignor patrick tawale says together with stakeholders supported by the united nations the quasi religious body will turn tables around you and i know that there are some religious groupings that preach that uh, this COVID-19 thing eh, is something that was created and they feel like, let's just pray to God. But you know, I to be realistic. God helps those who help themselves first. But also another way of putting it, 
is that we do our part because God created us with a lot of intelligence, a lot of strength, and also capabilities. Because I used to be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> President Chawela underscored the need for different players and, uh, coming together to speak with one voice in, on the vaccine and the imminent danger of a COVID-19 third wave. Malawi journeying in ending child marriage. UN and UNICEF representative Matteo Frontini has observed this engagement was crucial as communities need to be targeted with renewed efforts and positive messages amid widespread disinformation. The synergies have been there, but the more formal they are, the better impact we have. And uh, right now, we are actually looking into uh, empowering communities. Out of the targeted 11 million doses of the vaccine to achieve herd immunity, less than 400,000 have so far been administered. For Zodiac and Blanta, this is Alex Banda. Minister of Agriculture, Lobin Lowe, says of the dependence on maize and limited investment in other agricultural sectors are some of the problems affecting food systems in Malawi and Africa. Speaking Wednesday during a virtual dialogue for African ministers on the UN Food System Summit 2021, Lowe has called for scaling up of diversification in Malawi and other countries in the region who are fighting against hunger and food insecurity. Innocent Gunchedwa has filed this report. Minister of Agriculture Lobni Lowe says that the virtual African ministers' dialogue which was organized by the Regional Universities Forum for Capacity Building and Agriculture, RU Forum, is a great opportunity for African countries. According to Lowe, inputs from the dialogue will inform what African countries will take to a UN Food Summit coming up in September. Already, one concerning area in the African region that came out from the forum is low diversity in African countries. Lowe said the situation is also the same in Malawi, all efforts focus on maize, while a little attention to other areas of agriculture. According to the dialogue, is maize food. It's not only maize, but as a country, we need to diversify. Chairman of the Board of Rural Forum, Professor George Ganyamapiri, says that no country can fully become food secure without diversification. Many people, when they have eaten rice or potatoes, they were still waiting to eat from Sima. But uh, we need to move away from that. We have to diversify. About 20 African countries took part in the virtual summit dialogue. Meanwhile, a parliamentary cluster which is scrutinizing budgetary allocations for agriculture, climate change and natural resources has taught the Minister of Agriculture to remove the National Food Reserve Agency, NFRA, from this year's mass procurement exercise, saying only Artmark can assist in as far as reach out to smallholder farmers is concerned. Co-chairperson for the cluster, Samir Suleiman, said the legislators also want government to release a total of 80 billion kwacha, which Admark is looking for to effectively buy from produ farm produce this year. Principal Secretary in the Minister of Agriculture, Erika Maganga, said the ministry will put this into consideration. You're watching the news here on Zodiac. We'll be back with more after this. Welcome back. Here are the top stories again. Police in Lilongwe impound all nine roadworthy Kebaza motorcycles. President Lazarus Sekwera appoints four new commissioners of the Malawi Electoral Commission. Commentators question Sekwera's suggestion to turn quasi religious grouping park into a constitutional body. And Agriculture Minister Lobin Lowe says over dependence on maize affects food systems in Malawi and Africa. Moving on. The Anti-Corruption Bureau, ACB, has halted the awarding of procurement of fuel contracts to three companies of Lake Oil, 
Dolbit and Camel Oil. Following an April that National Oil Company of Malawi, Nokma, did not follow proper channels in the awarding process. Several rights groups, including Human Rights Defenders Coalition, HRDC, have been pressing on SCB to institute the investigations amid fears that prolonged impasse between Nokma and Mera risks plunging the country into a deep pure crisis. Shimwengwe Badata reports. The Anti-Corruption Bureau, SCB, has halted Nokma's intention to award contracts to the three companies in order to pave way for investigations. SCB's Director of Communications, Egrita Ndala, told Zodiac a restriction notice has been served to Nokma following suspicion of foul play in the awarding of the contracts. We received the complaints and we are investigating those complaints. So in order for us to investigate effectively, uh, we issued a restriction notice. Investigations by nature are dynamic and it's difficult for us to, to say we, were, we are going to finish the investigation by such, such a date. Human Rights Defenders Coalition, HRDC, grew frustrated in the past few days and wrote SCB to take action after revelations showed Nokma flouted procedures in the awarding of fuel supply contracts. HRDC's chairperson, Gift Trapensi, is now pleased with SCB's decision. We are happy that um, SCB has taken that action. What we want is a, a fair process, a process that follows the procurement procedure. We want the value for money. Uh, so we're expecting a lot uh, from SCP, not only stopping, but as well to investigate the issue. The investigations by SCB come amid concerns Malawi could be hit by a fuel crisis if wrangles over the procurement of fuel between Nokma and Mera are not urgently resolved. For Zodiac, this is Chimwemwe Padata. The United Nations Student Fund, UNICEF, has called for hefty resources towards sectors that are vital in the re realization of the Malawi 2063 blueprint. UNICEF country representative Rudolf Schwenk extended the plea Wednesday in Lilongwe during an engagement with the Parliamentary Budget Committee. The meeting was part of a series of engagements on proposed allocations in the 2021-2022 national budget. Second Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Aisha Adams, and Parliamentary Committee on Budget and Finance Chair, Gladys Ganda, admitted resources allocated in the budget are not enough to cater to meet all needs. Grace Combe with details. For the past two weeks, cluster committees of Parliament have held a series of meetings with both state actors and non-state actors to get their input on the 2021-2022 national budget allocation pegged at 1.9 trillion kwacha. UNICEF country representative Rudolf Schwenk holds the view that while the resources are not enough to adequately fund all national activities, government should prioritize sectors that are directly involved in the development of people for the country to attain its Malawi 2063 goals. As the UN Organization for Children, I am of course very interested in, in issues that relate to young people, the children. So we have presented also from UNICEF's side on um, the, the trends in investments in education, in health, which make up the bulk of the social sector spending, around 25%, but it's still below the international proposed thresholds. So it is it is good, but it's not good enough. And then um, there are uh, sectors like child protection, where investments are very, very little actually, 44 kwacha per child per year. So it's how much can you do with that, with that funding? Second Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Aisha Adams, described the meetings that have been conducted as crucial, saying they provide direction to Parliament on areas to be looked into before the national budget is approved. After hearing from the, from the civil societies and the departments, uh, the members of Parliament will take those views into the chamber. And where the, the agencies say we need this vote to be increased, we are very optimistic that the, 
the Minister of Minister of Finance and the line ministries will be able to do that because those will represent the views of the people. Parliamentary Committee on Budget and Finance Chairperson Gladys Ganda acknowledged that some areas in the budget need to be looked into, saying most actors feel the proposals are unrealistic. Deliberating on the topic, the forgotten bits, what is society most vulnerable in the 2021-2022 budget proposal, NGO Coalition for Child Rights Representative Desmond Numa employed members of parliament to improve allocations that go towards social protection programs such as child protection. Members of parliament will resume deliberations next week Monday on the 2021-2022 national budget. This is Grace Combe for Zodiac. Minister of Gender, Community Development and Social Warfare, Patricia Cagliati, has warned police officers against perpetrating sexual violence. Speaking at Chancellor College in Zomba Wednesday during a graduation of 60 police officers in forensic investigations related to sexual violence, Cagliati expressed concern that people conversant with the law are in the forefront perpetrating this form of violence. Deputy Inspector General of Police responsible for administration, Melin Yolam, assured the public of total pr professionalism from Malawi Police Service. Emmanuel Shibwana reports. Six police officers are now equipped with various skills to scientifically solve rape and deformed jigsaw puzzles, meaning are responsible for gender, community development and social welfare. Patricia Kaliati while presiding over the graduation ceremony, cited several instances where perpetrators of sexual violence were found not guilty in court due to lack of incriminating evidence. The training which the officers are being taken up, uh, through for the 14 weeks is going to help us, especially um, uh, supporting even the judiciary, how to take the cases of uh, deformment and rape and the GBVs. And even to trust the perpetrators if they've done uh, the, the, a, a toddler who cannot even speak or even identify. So this is a one of this kind. She recounted an incident that occurred in Lilongwe where a two-year-old baby girl had her gentle parts reshaped due to defilement. The baby girl could not identify the defiler and the suspect was acquitted. The 21-week training, according to Kaliati, will bring such matters to an end. But shot a warning to men in uniform. Yeah, you know, sometimes when you are, you, are, you are in the boat, you don't feel like you can be drawn. And you take all those chances as if you're on top of water, or on top of everything. That's why we were even advising the officers to say, please, you should not even cover anybody else. You've been trained, whether you're fellow officers that are in the, in the, in the, in the, either against the law, let them take them head on and even prosecute them. The same with even the high court judges. They've got to leave anybody behind. We have the equipment that you can even testify and you can even have information out of it. Deputy Inspector General of Police, responsible for administration, Melin Yolamu, pledged to do the needful in the quest of eradicating forms of violence against girls and women. These investigators and prosecutors are going to assist the Malawi Police Service in arresting the actual perpetrators of the case and connecting them to the offences that they have committed. The training was supported by European Union and UNDP under Spotlight Initiative. For ZPS in Zomba, this is Emmanuel Chibana. In business news, the African Continent of Free Trade Area, AFC, FTA has been described as an opportunity for the country to diversify its exports and shift from relying on tobacco as the country's major foreign exchange earner. In this agreement, African countries have to come together to create a single continent wide market for goods and services and to promote the movement of capital and natural persons. Malawi ratified the trade protocol in November last year and will roll out on July 1st this year. And according to Director of Trade in the Minister of Trade, Clement Kumbemba, this gives a chance for Malawi to have access to a bigger market on the continent. Madalit Sapiri with the details. Speaking during the second validation workshop of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, AFC FTA, in Lilongo on Wednesday, Director of Trade in the Minister of Trade, Clement Kumbemba, 
emphasized that access to market being crucial to any trade, the new protocol offers Malawians a chance to have an access of over 1.2 billion people from the continent. I think we can not pretend that we are alone. We need to get hooked to a bigger market, a market that can give uh, 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 opportunities to our business sector. So I think uh, let's uh, you know, move in stages and say here's an opportunity for us to have a bigger market for whatever we produce in Malawi that will have a, a, a stable market. And Baranai Clemens Chikwene, who is Program Management Officer for the African Trade Policy Center, says the agreement is key for diversification for Malawi. In line with the national strategy to diversify. So I see at a strategic level the AFCFTA as an instrument for diversifying the African, the Malawian economy from uh, from tobacco. But how ready is the private sector to embrace this new agreement? Robert Nazitwere is operations manager for AHL Commodities Exchange. On behalf of the private sector, I would say that we are ready to implement this strategy. In this uh, roadmap, we have been consulted from the way go, and therefore we have had our input going in into the strategy. So far, 36 African countries have ratified the AFCFTA. For Zodiac, this is Madalito Pili reporting. That's about what we have time for in this news edition. But before you go, I look at the headlines. Police in Ilungwe impound online roadworthy Kabaza motorcycles. President Laszlo Sekwira appoints four new commissioners of the Malawi Electoral Commission. Commentators question Chikwere's suggestion to turn quasi-religious grouping park into a constitutional body. And Agriculture Minister Lobin Lowe says over-dependence on maize affects food systems in Malawi and Africa. Visit our website zodicmalawi.com for more news. My name is Philip Kaitano Dakoshita. Thanks for watching. Good afternoon.